Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. But what I do know, I'm still Angie. This is still 4F Beauty. And hopefully I've remembered, you should be watching me in black and white right now. You will have been able to see from the thumbnail, the title, and if you bother to read any of it, the description, that I am trying out another of my brands. I want to, I've just found a huge knot in the back of my hair. That's not what the title says though, is it? The title is informing you. <laughs> oh, fibro fog. Don't you just love when your brain wanders off and does something completely different? I am trying out another one of my brands I wanted to try this year. And I've managed to get my hands on the Sydney Grace X Mel Thompson Tiny Marvels palette, which I'm super happy about. I'm less happy that my hair seems to be going flatter than a pancake on Shrove Tuesday. <coughs> But, if you want to find out exactly what this looks like, which colours I chose, whether I like it, whether I'm happy that I finally tried Sydney Grace, then my friend, you know you have the best seat in the house right now. You don't know? Sammy the Sloth here confirms this is the case. He also reminds you that it is now time to grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, get comfy and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey my lovelies. Gosh it's been a long time since I filmed. Hi. I am um, it was a combination of things. It was, I had my first COVID jab, yay, uh, but unfortunately uh, I got the flu like symptoms that just, the flu symptoms I had for a couple of days, but for a good seven days I just had no energy. I tried sitting in front of here and filming and I was just, uh, let's just say, I was boring myself, let alone anything else. Um, and my cellulitis on my leg has been particularly rough with the change of weather. Marvellous. Um, and then because I got run down, I got a cluster of spots on my chin. So I'm just like, oh, just like, really? So it's been almost two weeks <laughs> since I sat down and filmed. So I apologise if I'm a little bit clunky today, but I will have shown you this in the intro. So excited to have this. Been wanting to try Sydney Grace for a long time. And when I saw this collab they did with Mel Thompson, I just fell in love. I just thought, oh, it's so beautiful. If you don't know what she looks like, plastic condom thing off now can't I? If you don't know what she looks like Can you fall all the way back? Yay you will. Good good good. This is she. Isn't she stunning? Oh I know what you're thinking. There's a lot of neutrals in there for a girl that likes colour. Yes there is. But there's also the peach, the gold, the green, the cranberry golden bronze plummy, this kind of bluey, browny, shifty lilac, burgundy brown, deep chocolate brown. So there's enough in here to keep me interested. Um, Sydney Grace is not cheap to buy and then I have the issue of getting it over to the UK and Postage, import tax, yada 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 yada. However, 
someone, and it was one of my 3 a.m. in the morning, I can't sleep because of pain moments. Someone was actually selling this, and I literally, I think it had only been up for 20 minutes, and I'm like, oh god, and I just sort of shuffled money around and just poof, bought it. I thought, do you know what? I'll pay the catalogue three days late. Fine. Um, because I knew the chances of, of being able to grab another one of these. Damn sight slimmer than I am. So, this is, of course, one of the brands that I wanted to try this year. Uh, so I'm finally going to get to find out what all the fuss is when it comes to Sydney Grace. Still haven't decided yet whether I'm going to go neutral, pastel, deep, colourful. Haven't decided yet. You know what I'm like? I'll, I'll just dip into whichever colour calls me most, really. Uh, fortunately, the lady that had used this has barely touched it. I mean, some of these pans prior to me swatching them hadn't even been touched. So, absolute awesome bargain I got there. So, uh, this still remains a teaching channel, even if I am a little bit rusty. So, I do zoom right in close to my eyes, so that you can see what's going on, even if you're watching me on a small phone screen and your eyesight's not so good. It does mean that when I look down to add more pigment or clean my brush or whatever, um, you do get a shot of my wonderful Widow's Peak here. But I'm informed that a Widow's Peak on a wig dramatically increases the value of said wig. So uh, if any of you happen to be uh, wig makers out there, like my lovely wee Scottish faking friend Will, uh, feel free to have a very nice close-up shot of said Widow's Peak, should you wish to put one on a wig of your own. Right. Um, <laughs> I also go at a speed that hopefully all beginners can keep up with. That's more due to chronic pain than anything else, to be quite honest. Um, and another thing with, with being zoomed right in, I can cut out when I have to stop and wince with pain. Uh, and it's a lot less obvious than if I was zoomed out. A lot of people still confuse deep set eyes and hooded lids. So I'm going to insert an information clip, probably recorded by myself when I still had lovely long nails. So it's pre-lockdown. Can't believe that over a year in lockdown. Um, <clears throat> this information clip will describe the two different eye shapes, explain how they're different, and give you the best workaround for each eye shape so that you get the best initial application and the best longevity that you can when you've got bits of your lid rubbing against itself. Once that clip is done, the clip will be very up close and personal so you can see what I'm talking about. Once that is done, I will be back to apply some coloured pigments into my eyelids. Oh, I'm so excited. Right, I'll see you at the other end of the clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Crown Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. 
so unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes. I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye, you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush something like this or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Okay. I'm going to start, let me just shift this slightly that way so I can just see a bit more comfortable. There we go. I'm going to start off with an Anastasia Beverly Hills brush, the E25. It's basically a loose packed blending brush. And I am going to start off by going into. Flutterby, I think. Oh, there's a lot of kick up. Wow. Was not expecting that. It's okay, I'll just tap back off into the pan and then uh, I can always pick it up again. Come back. Now, I hold the brush at the very end. If the handle's long enough, brace it against the palm of your hand to stabilise this end. This means you put as little pressure on your lid as possible. 
and we're going to do the Viennese Waltz blend which is natural turns towards the nose, a flecker when we get there and reverse turns to come back out again. The reason I do this this is, yeah, this is shade Flutterby. The reason I do this rather than just the windshield wiper wow there's a lot of pigment in these is because I'm 46, nearly 47 you know, the skin on my eyelids moves I've lost over 200 pounds so, you know, the skin on my eyelids moves but I know slim teenagers that have a similar issue. I can't believe that's just one dip. I'm going to build the colour up a little bit just to see how deep these pastel shades can actually go. But that's blending really nicely. As you can see I'm just doing the front half here because if you just rely on the windscreen wiper if you do have any uh, elasticity to your skin you can get it folding over on itself and giving those telltale white tiger stripes or barcoding and by doing this we're gently manipulating the skin first in one direction then the other but without causing any additional damage to the gentle skin of our eyelids it is you know the thinnest skin on your body and you should treat it as such. You'll see on this eye that I've got super super deep creasing just here and that's from when this eye was pulled around when I was five six years old when they were trying to work out why I wasn't seeing properly. Obviously long before I went blind in it. But the pulling around of that lid has caused long-term damage and now I have to, when I'm applying colour to the mobile lid here, I actually have to break my golden rule about not stretching the lid out because otherwise the colour just builds up in the creases and then ends up as I move my lid through the day, getting into my eyes and falling down my face, and it's both painful and un, you know, unsightly. Okay, I am absolutely shocked at the pigmentation there, and I can really see why people rave about Sydney Grace's mats. Okay, I am now going to go into uh, I think Jewel B, which is the lilac. Same brush, I've just cleaned it off on a clean washcloth. Ah, oh, considerably less kick up in this one. That's interesting to see. Let's see if it affects how. goes on a lot more pastel. Let's see how well this will build up. You can see when I'm blending I'm going over onto Flutterby to really blend those two colours together so we get a nice seamless transition between the two. So though this went on more pastel, it is building up nicely. That's good to know. Had I known it was going to be that pastel, I probably would have done them the other way around. And done this on the inner part and flutter by on the outer edge. But Pretty. 
I love that these are all sort of insect names and stuff relating to you know tiny marvels as as, as the palette is called and when I first got together with my husband obviously when he was just a boyfriend he was absolutely terrified of spiders now he's like me he names them he says good morning to them when he sees them we have one particular huge spider who keeps coming back to say hello which is fred i'm not sure if it's uh, six generations of fred now but um fred keeps coming back to see us he's one of the ones with um Long, spindly legs, but covered in lots of fine hairs. Really pretty. I suppose that's the benefit in the UK, that if our spiders bite you here, unless it's a rogue one that's come in from a bunch of bananas at Tesco's, you're pretty sure you're not really going to have any major worries. It'd be just like a bee sting or... Hmm. Okay, I'm liking this so far. I'm just cleaning the brush off on a clean washcloth in between colours. Um, I don't like using colour switches anymore. They are far, far too harsh on the bristles of your brushes. Now, do I want to go into Lovebug or do I want to go into Bugaboo? I don't think Lovebug's going to work against that one, so I'm going to go into Bugaboo. Now, if you've moved your crease, this is the colour that you take through your new crease. Because we're going to do the deepest colour now. And the reason we do this is because anything deeper goes backwards and anything lighter comes forwards. So if we've had to move our crease, this is the way of making it look like this particular part of the eye falls back further away from whatever other colours we put on. So it's a great trick to the eye. And you can see I'm just really softly blending that and then just lightly blending it into Flutterby and Jewelby. These are blending together so nicely. I'm just going to bring that down onto the outer edge of the mobile lid. Add a little bit of colour just there. Now I like to sort of flick up like this at the end so that if I'm having a day where my eyes are particularly watery and I know that I'm not going to be able to get away with a liner this will do the same effect of pulling the outer edge of the eye up. It's also great if you're new to using winged liner because you can do this and then just follow the edge of your eyeshadow to do the line. Bit of a sneaky peeky tip there for you. I really like that. Reminds me of a passion fruit. Speaking of which, oh, Jaffa cakes have got two new flavours out at the moment. Limited edition ones. 
cherry, uh, which is okay, and passion fruit. Oh my gosh. Passion fruit Jaffa cakes are just the nuts. Well, they're not because they haven't got nuts in them, but you know what I mean. I must admit, I'm very, very happy with how these are blending. I can see why people rave about Sydney Grace shadows, and I'm yet to get onto the shimmers yet. Which I must admit, I am looking forward to. Because you hear such amazing things about Sydney Grace shimmers, but then you hear amazing things about. Natasha Denona and Pat McGrath, and I wasn't that blown away with theirs. I mean, don't get me wrong, they were nice enough, but nothing that I didn't have in terms of, you know, indie brand shadows. Hmm. Now, regular viewers will know that I wet a shimmer regardless of, um, brand when I first try them. The reason for that is, well there's a number of reasons actually, partly because I don't cut my crease the first time I use a new shimmer because I want to see how much depth and opacity the shadow has which you can't always tell from a swatch. Um, And by wetting it, you're giving it the best chance possible of showing it to its best advantage. Uh, if you don't like applying shimmers with your finger, which I don't, applying them wet is kind of the equivalent of applying them with your finger. However, never, ever ever apply them when you have a wet brush going into a dry pigment. Always put the pigment on the brush first, then wet it. Because if you do it the other way around, you're going to eventually end up killing your pigment. And I have just swatched couple of these shimmers on the back of my hand and oh the other reason I like wetting them is because it helps to minimize fallout now I'm going to be using makeup session fix fit but you can use any liquid you can use a moisturizing spray like MAC or Mario Badescu um, you can use a primer a setting spray a finishing spray you can even just take a bottle like this, rinse it out and put fresh water in each day. Just always go into a pressed pigment with a dry brush. So I've got a flat, probably a concealer brush or an eyeshadow packer brush. And I'm going to go into fire butts. Which always makes me think of this, the poem about the glow worm. How can you be glum when you've got a light on the end of your bum? So, give that a squirt. Now, the ferrule is now wet. So tuck it into your knuckles and spin. Because the last thing you want is moisture getting down here. And loosening the glue that holds those bristles in. Because you'll end up... A very expensive stick otherwise. Right, let's get down into this inner corner here and start applying. Oh, hello.
That is beautiful. Right, I'm going to dry the brush off and go back in to do the other eye. Now, as I said to you, I do have to break my own rule about not pulling the eyelid around. However, I will show you how I do it so that I cause as little additional damage to my eye as possible. So I start off by only pulling the lid out as far as I need to to straighten the creases and then I get straight in there apply it and blend it tightly over the crease area and then gently let the lid go I don't just let it spring back and then the rest of the lid I do the same way as I do the other lid but you can see there's significantly more movement on this side than there was on this one. Again, draw my brush off and I'm going to go into hmm I was going to go into BB but I really want to pick up that orange so I'm going to go into Meadowhawk which is Kind of a corally shade. And I'm going to use this on the sort of middle ish third of the eyelid. Then using the very tip of the bristles, just lightly buff where it meets the mat, and then very gently drag the lighter shimmer across the deeper one. If necessary, clean the brush off, pick up a wee bit of the lighter one. Just to see how pretty that is. Oof. Right, so I shall dry the brush off. And I shall go back in and do to the eye. I really can see why people rave about this formula though. Which is a problem because it's going to make me want to order more of them. So I'm really going to have to hope that more people buy them from America. Decide they don't like them after all. And put them up on Depop and that I spot them before anybody else does. And that I have significant funds. purchase them at the time or sufficient ones not significant there that is such a pretty look right beautiful ones I am going to pause you and I'm going to go and you know put some foundation and whatnot on and I'll be back to finish off this eye look now I've got quite a while before I get to talk to you again, but for you, Pop It, it's going to be completely instant. So I'll see you right now. Hey, beautifuls. Okay, I am back. I used Death Moth for my brows today. Yes, I actually used a brown. I used that one. Though I think I've missed a bit. I just um, stick mine up with soap basically and then go over them with, as you can see, 
eyeshadow. It's a perfect way of making sure you've got a great match to what you're wearing. Okay, under eye. I'm going to use this flat topped brush and I'm going to go into Mantis which is that gorgeous green, look at that. I'm just going to run that really lightly along the lower lash line. I wish there was a lemon mat in here. Yes, I'm flinching doing this side because the number of times I've poked myself in the eye. Being blind in this eye, I've only got peripheral vision. I have no peripheral vision, I'm relying on muscle memory. And a viewfinder that's a little bit too far away when you haven't got your contacts in. Long term viewers will recognise the next brush. It is from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. Flat topped, chunky, little bit like me. Um, I am going to go into, I think, Tree Hopper. It's the most mustardy of the browns. I'm just going to use that to really gently soften and buff out that lower lash line hmm. and then this is a seriously old cheap lip brush that I bought from eBay to be honest probably back in the 90s <coughs> and I'm going to dip into web and pop a little bit of that just up under the tail of my brow here And then I'm going to go into BB and use that for my inner corner. And regular viewers will know I always bring that down underneath my tear duct and just sort of blend it into the colours under the eye. I just think for my eye shape it's, it finishes it off nicely. And if I'm having a day where I can't use anything on my waterline, because my eyes are too sensitive today, it really does help sort of finish the whole look off. I really like this, I have to be honest. Right, my beautiful ones, I'm going to pause you for one last time. I'm going to chuck some more highlight on my face. Ooh. Mascara, lippy, do something with the hair. And I'll be back with my finished look and my initial first impression thoughts on Sydney Grace Tiny Marvels. I'll see you, well, right now again, really. Helio. Okay, I am back. As you can see, I decided to go for a vampire kind of. But it is a bullet lippy, which means I can't remember, I haven't worn this one for ages and I can't remember if I stopped wearing it because it used to get on my teeth or if it used to leave like a butthole lip. I shall have to find out. However, what I'm talking about is this. Sydney Grace Tiny Marvels. This is my finished a first impression look with it. Yes, of course I did colourful. I mean, come on. I'm going to find the colour in a neutralish palette. You know this. Um, if you want me to do a neutral look with it, then by all means let me know. Um, 
I really like this. There's a little bit of inconsistency in terms of how much kick up you get on the mats, but then that's potentially because of the type of colour pigments they're using. Um, they clearly know their stuff because even though some are very loosely packed and you get a lot of kick up and others less so, you get the right amount of pigment on your brush, it transfers well onto the skin and it blends well with each other. There's no, or that I could see, um, post edit will obviously tell me more, but from what I could see in the viewfinder and from what I can see in my mirror here, there doesn't seem to be any obvious patching or skipping or anything. Um, I'm really liking this and like I said that's going to be dangerous because now I'm going to want more. <sighs> but am I happy I got it? Yes. Do I recommend it if you can get hold of it? If you like the colour scheme? Yes. Do I think you need it? In your palette? In your palette? In your collection? No, it's makeup. Nobody needs it. However, if you want it and you have the cash available and you can get a hold of one, I think it'll make a really nice addition to anybody's makeup collection. Um, I'm certainly going to enjoy playing with that off screen for a bit. But like I said, if there are any colours in here, that you really wanted to see me use or like I said if you want to see me do a neutral look as in going to work or college or court you could be the judge um, just let me know and I'll, I'll you know quite happily have another play on camera for you but suffice to say, I am extremely pleased that I finally got around to drawing Sydney Grace shadows. So, if you're one of my 4F babies, please check you're still subscribed. YouTube are unsubscribing people, but they are leaving films in your suggested, so it's not obvious you've been deleted. It's also worth double checking your... Um, uh, notification status uh, because mine keep getting knocked back to personalised rather than all which means I don't get any notifications at all and that's true not just for my channel but check all the channels that you regularly watch and that you want to get notifications for if you're new here and you've tripped over me by accident hi hello welcome I hope you enjoyed it. I was a little bit clunky today from not having filmed for so long. Uh, but this is pretty much what you get with me. Um, you get someone wittering at you about everything and nothing, whose brain occasionally wanders off for a walk and usually comes back, but not before me forgetting at least one of the words I was groping my tiny little brain for. Uh, uh, but I'm told it's a very soothing voice and therefore that means the wittering is worth it. So if you would like to join the 4F family, we are the nicest family on YouTube. It's super easy to do. You hit that red subscribe button, then you ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications in the home. You'll actually get some. In the meantime, as well as rather ample backside upon which I am currently perched I have a rather ample back catalogue of films you could watch do you see what I did there? did you find it funny? oh god that really hurts <laughs> really really hurts <laughs> back it feels like it's probably my back that caught in my rib cage okay basically I've said this for years grab a drink grab a snack pick a playlist put your feet up get comfy and indulge Give yourself some me time, just unplug for 20 minutes, half hour, however long you've got, 
and just chill out to one of my films or more you can waste a whole day watching my films I say waste is chilling out ever a waste? right my lovely ones as ever all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time bye for now